All right. Uh, next one, next one uh, directly from Brazil, Rafael Figueroa. He's one of our best friends and one of the signature companies that has worked in Accelerator in our program. Uh, Rafael Figueroa is the co-founder and CEO of Portal Telemedicina, a Brazilian company that created a revolutionary telediagnostic platform that provides healthcare to 300 cities. Rafael graduated in economics from UFSC in Brazil and conducted his postgrad studies in design thinking at Berkeley University. In addition to his background in investment and banking, Rafael has conducted research in artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, algorithms, and applied mathematics. Recently being nominated Google Developer Expert in Machine Learning, and it's a real pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Hello everyone, pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation, Paco and Mario. Uh, it's a privilege to be surrounded with so many brains and this amazing event. Uh, we are an online diagnostic platform that connects clinics and hospitals in remote areas to medical specialists. For example, if you go to the rainforest, it's going to be hard to find a cardiologist and a neurologist. To show how it works, I'm going to start with a video, a two minutes video that we recorded with Google Cloud last year in one of our most remote clients in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Estamos juntos, eu e meu esposo, e a gente tem feito esse trabalho. Recebíamos pessoas em casa que adoeciam. Pensando nas pessoas carentes, nós tivemos a ideia então de abrir uma clínica. O Amazonas, a gente costuma dizer que é um outro país dentro do Brasil. Há poucos especialistas que querem vir morar no Amazonas. A gente fez parceria com a telemedicina. Portal is a telediagnostic platform, so we connect remote areas like the Brazilian rainforest to specialist doctors. We receive AKGs, EGs, and X-rays the conventional way. Usually, it takes 60 days to get a result back, and we do this in the same day in a few minutes with 10x less cost. So for us, the cloud was the only way. It needs to be easy to use. The nurse only have to do the exam, it will automatically appear in the cloud and to the doctor. So Google Cloud is enabling us to really grow and operate this large-scale telemedicine company. The end goal is that anyone in the world can have access to quality healthcare through Google Cloud. And I believe that this will change healthcare forever. Cada dia mais eu me sinto bem feliz de trazer. Então assim, começou realmente a abrir as portas para um outro mundo. to us because uh, we visit uh, the rainforest uh, with this Google guys that, that filmed that and Paulo is a patient uh, that shows in the video he was in the bed for almost a year feeling very sick nobody could find the cause uh, of the disease so the doctors put the uh, electrodes on him to do a electrocardiogram and a whole exam we transfer the data to the cloud and one of our doctors in Sao Paulo 2,500 kilometers away makes the diagnostic online this is a workflow this is possible through a proprietary technology that integrates directly with medical devices. 
So this is our first machine learning element. In 2014, when we started to reach about 20 clinics, uh, we saw a problem that was the lack of interoperability between medical devices. So each device speak a language, proprietary files, and to be able to train models, you need to standardize. You need to create a robust data lake, uh, which is structured. And also there was a lot of manual process uh, to be able to upload this data. So we started to partner with universities and research foundations. We raised 15 R&D grants so far uh, to integrate in all medical devices. So today we cover about 90% of them in a way that the nurse only have to do the exam. Telemetry, raw data to cloud, and we show to the doctors in the other side with no human intervention. So it became really easy to use. And with that, we grew very fast, reaching about 300 cities, 500 hospitals in Brazil and Africa. So today, this is one of the largest, it's the largest telediagnostic operations running globally. And we do about five to 10,000 daily diagnostics. From these 500 clients, just three verticals. One is health insurers in general. We imagine is the largest health insurer in Brazil. We also have corporate healthcare. This is company like BRF, Petrobras, Natura, that have like 100,000 employees. What we do is they put uh, internal infirmary with just one nurse that access all these uh, specialists. So we keep the people healthy. So we work with a lot of preventive medicine in this vertical here. And last year, with this technology that integrates with devices in EHRs, we want to be with the Sao Paulo government to integrate the database of 80, uh, 35 million citizens. Uh, this is a pilot. We want to take this national out. And right now, it doesn't matter if you do the exam in the local lab or in a large hospital in Sao Paulo, we build the timeline of the patient so they have the history. And of course, this enables a uh, pretty big data set in machine learning. And touching now how we use TensorFlow. So this is the doctor's screen. On the left, you can see an exam, it can be any modality here. And on the right, they have buttons. So once again, you need to structure data. And doctors, they are poetries. They like to type uh, the same issue in 10 different ways. If you have one problem, each doctor will do a diagnostics in a different way. So we had to map not to free text anymore. We transform the text that they use at most per disease in decision trees. So we don't just look at that and we'll click arrhythmia, next, tachycardia, next. Even in brain scans, they will look at the brain waves, they will click epilepsy, diffuse, frontal lobe, diagnose, normal, diagnose. And this is speed up about 10 times how many diagnostics they do per hour, which enable us to drop the price points to the clinics and hospitals. So today we're able to do a brain scan for $3, which is a world record, re really reducing price points. And second advantage of that is that we're not mapping free text anymore. We're mapping imaging to very strong labels that are then linked to ICD codes, international disease codes. So with that, we are able to train models. So this was our uh, work with Google Launchpad Accelerator and Google AI Studio, was to build models that automatically detect these diseases. Today we have about 30 million patients in the database and a very robust data set because like neurosurgeons click in these buttons. And with that, we are able to train. We have 210 TensorFlow models in production today. Uh, with several like accuracies and recall between 85 to 98 percent, and we use that to de detect and localize diseases. How it goes in a workflow? You're gonna receive an exam here. It can be any modality. In that, that case, is a chest X-ray. That will go to a neural net that has been trained in millions of examples. That will find the disease. In that case, I think it's a tuberculosis. That will put a risk score to do automatic triage. So this is how. We do 5,000 daily diagnoses because the emergencies will get first to the doctors and the normal exams will go down the queue. And this keeps reprioritizing the queue daily in real time. Then the doctor will do the diagnostic, not the robot. And this will retrain the AI again daily with thousands of new examples per day. This is a case of x-ray, but it can be uh, APGs or, or any modality. We have these 200 models. Now going a little deeper um, technical, how we did that, and this was our project with Peter Norvick on uh, the Google AI Studio. We already had the models, but we wanted to build a machine that would train these models in a scalable way. So probably you guys heard about continuous integration, continuous development, and all, and all the DevOps uh, concept that is going on right now, especially in front-end development. So when you change something in the code that you push to production, uh, it will create a new version and do a canary deploy to put 1% of your traffic in the new version, 99 in the previous one. Then you monitor CPU, memory, latency. 
If it's within thresholds of your previous version, you put 50% of the traffic, run 12 more hours. Works well, you move 100% of the traffic. This is happening like daily every time someone push code in production. Now think about that to machine learning. So the way it works that even with a lot of PhDs in the team and Google helping us, it's still a lot of trial and error. Like, what neural architecture we need to use for detect a nodule? It's different from detect pneumonia. It's different for detect active. Like, uh, it's 200 models, very narrow, and the neural network architecture change, the pre-processing change for each of these models. So the way that it works right now, each time we want to train a new model, we get the new data from two to three weeks of exams. Then we put it up 100 containers running in ML engine. We use Kubernetes to do that. Each of these 100 containers will have a different neural net architecture. One we use ResNet 50, ResNet 100, 150. The other we use Inception V3, V4. Some of them will have Gaussian noise in the pre-processing, rotation, elastic distortion. This is a several different techniques, one different technique per container. So we just run this script that will put 100 containers to run in parallel and train this model. About one week later, they will start to converge the training. And then we got the data from TensorBoard. And similar to the continuous integration, where you're going to monitor CPU and memory, in that case, you're going to monitor accuracy, recall, precision, machine learning, metrics. If the metrics are better than the previous model, 1% of the traffic goes to the new model. And doctors starting to use it. 12 hours. It works. 50% of the traffic, then 100%. This help that happened automatically every two weeks. Our data science don't even have to like, click anything anymore. And this enables us to run thousands of experiments per week. Just imagine one data science that used to run one, two experiments per week. Now, one data science is running up to 1,000 experiments per week. And this is the thing that made us having the state-of-the-art metrics are not right now even better than Stanford, MIT. It's that because we are running this with a production mindset not an academic mindset. This needs to be good enough to go to production and to triage cancer, for example. And this DevOps concept is what made this possible. And another thing that really helps is that we train those models with data sources from 500 hospitals. So when you, you read a paper from Stanford, they have a chest X-ray paper that like compete with ours. Uh, they train in the G, like the last G device in the Stanford hospital. When we apply that model in Brazil devices, you just lost like half, half of your precision. Like really lose because there, it, it's biased towards the tier one GE PET scan. It's not going to work in the Brazilian devices or these devices. So what we did is we retrained those models, we did transfer learning with this uh, 100 containers being trained based on 500 different hospitals, a lot of tier one, two, three devices. And now we can generalize these models very well to any kind uh, of device. This was made in, in partnership with a lot of manufacturers, research foundations, Google and IDB, just to show that it was an ecosystem uh, of partners that made this possible. And right now we are in the phase that we start an international expansion, so we're going Latin, uh, Canada and Europe, and we look for partners to help us in this global expansion. So I invite you guys to join us in our mission to provide universal access to quality healthcare. Thank you.